every astronomer will remember when they first heard the results from WMAP. WMAP lays the cornerstone for a, a unified and coherent uh, cosmic theory. And by looking at the intensity of these spots, we can learn about things like how much matter there is in the universe, about the properties of the primordial fluctuations that grew to form galaxies. It represents a rite of passage for cosmology from speculation to precision science. The way the universe is, is the way that WMAP sees the universe. What note does a black hole play? Well, of course, it's B flat. The Perseus cluster is playing B flat, but 57 octaves lower than the one that's in the middle of the piano at middle C. A million billion times too low to hear with your ear. The sound waves are excited by a massive black hole right at the center of the cluster. And they, sound waves represent a, a significant energy flow not only is it heating the gas, it's keeping the central galaxy from getting bigger, it's keeping the stars from forming, and so here may be very much our solution to this fundamental problem with galaxy clusters. On October 4, 2002, Hetty detected just such a gamma ray burst and radioed its coordinates to the ground. At 5 a.m. in Pasadena, California, my cell phone received those coordinates and woke me up. I jumped out of bed, logged into my computer, and commanded the 48-inch ocean telescope on Mount Palomar near San Diego to take some images. This became the most intensively and thoroughly studied gamma ray burst in history, a wolf rayet star that has produced a core of heavy elements and down in the middle where an iron core about three times the mass of the sun has collapsed to a black hole. That black hole is about uh, 10 miles across, three times the mass of the sun, and all of the action is going to be there. This gamma ray burst visible from the edge of the universe is going to pro be produced in a region not as large as Washington, D.C. we found that there is some mechanism in nature that halts pulsar spin-up before these neutron stars can spin so fast and fly apart, that there's a cosmic speed limit, if you will. expectation is that these gravitational waves, as the star spins up, these gravitational waves will carry away that angular momentum, allowing it to actually get, if you will, sort of arrested or hung up at a frequency uh, due to these ripples in space-time, gravitational waves. 
it's been known for a long time that many of these neutron stars also intermittently have these gigantic thermonuclear explosions that happen on the surface of the star. And they're very, very bright. These flashes only last 10 to 20 seconds. But during, those, during that time, there's a spot on the star which is extremely bright. So you have an opportunity that lasts only 10 or 20 seconds to suddenly measure the spin of the star.